We know that when you're a Barbie girl in a Barbie world, life is in plastic and it's fantastic. But if you want to visit this plastic fantastic world, you have to go a specific way with specific vehicles. And so where is Barbie land and does it even exist? While this is being written, Barbie's about to cross the $500 million threshold at the worldwide box office. Yes. The movie follows stereotypical Barbie as she goes from happy-go-lucky Barbie living her best Barbie life with her fellow Barbies to a Barbie plagued by existential questions about very non-Barbie elements like Can death. Think about dying? Thinking about death is a mood killer at a party, unless it's a goth party, then that part's totally fun. But then again, that's another doll entirely. With her bummer thoughts getting in the way of enjoying her idealized existence of waking up in Wallace dream homes and driving dream cars to dream locations and gathering at night for dream girls nights, she seeks the counsel of Weird Barbie. Later in the movie, Weird Barbie is described as the one you played with too much. The hair is cut weird, the face has been drawn on. <laughs> It's Weird Barbie that tells stereotypical Barbie that her child's bummer mood is infecting her and she's got to go to the real world and straighten her up. Outside the Mattel office, no one in the real world thinks Barbie Land exists, much less that it would in fact be full of Barbies. At best, you'd assume that Barbie Land is a Barbie museum made up of one person's collection that's displayed in a former Shakey's somewhere on I-40. We soon learn that Barbies can, under just the right circumstance, go from Barbie land to the real world. And if you do the same thing backwards, you can make it to Barbie land even if you're a normal human. So what gives? Is it a physical place hidden away somewhere on Earth? Is it another dimension that you slowly slide to by going up or down the scale of Barbie's vehicles? The answer is a, a kind of hesitant yes. The easiest assumption would be that it's an alternate reality and the various vehicles that you transition to is the portal between worlds. Barbie Land manages to be both an alternate reality, getting Barbie in on the multiverse action, but also imaginary, which is to say, imagination creates and sustains Barbie Land. The landmarks for that are sprinkled throughout the movie, including narrator Helen Mirren explaining that no one walks their Barbies down the stairs. They simply lift them from the dream house and transfer them to the dream car. So Sasha's question about giant hands moving the dolls about makes sense from our non-magical reality reality. The biggest hint that it's fueled by imagination is stereotypical Barbie's connection to Gloria in the real world. It's Gloria's existential thoughts while reconnecting with her childhood Barbies to fill the space left by teenage daughters being teenage daughters. The Barbies go about their lives assuming that their success and happiness influences the real world and they've saved it, not realizing that the flow goes the other direction. People playing with Barbie and imagining a perfect world creates a perfect world for Barbie. And that can be undermined if they start worrying about cellulite and death. There's another tricky element when trying to make this world where an iconic doll character turns out to have an actual living counterpart living in a permanent G-rated Ibiza in an alternate reality fueled by imagination. There have been over a billion Barbies sold since that first one with a black and white swimsuit. So Barbie land should be way more crowded, right? Well, maybe not. This is where the multiverse really kicks in. While not all the dolls in the Barbie land we see are extensions of Gloria's Barbie, they must be an extension of someone's Barbie. What's likely is that everyone's Barbies exist in their own spaces with other Barbies that are sort of layered in on each other. In that case, it works like a regular multiverse. Simultaneously, these Barbies all go about very similar lives all in the same place, but not in the same reality. This then raises the question of how the Mattel board, or Barbie and Ken for that matter, end up in the right Barbie land. But we have to assume that there's something akin to quantum entanglement that puts them on the right course. Yep, in science fiction, when in doubt, my friends, invoke quantum physics. You don't have to explain that because so few people actually know how any of that works, including quantum physicists. Ken and Barbie enter the real world. In the end, when she wants to experience the messy, complicated real world with morality, she's given a human body with uh, bits. This seems to suggest, as Popeye would say, you are what you are regardless of where. So humans in Barbie land would still have human biology leaving them high and dry when it comes to actually eating or going to the bathroom. So you could stay, but you will either get hungry or really unpopular really fast. Good night, Barbies. I'm definitely not thinking about death anymore. 
All of this means that there's a crazy dark Barbie land of just weird Barbies for all the Barbies that end up decorating the cars from Wasteland Weekend or Halloween themed nightmare decorations. 